Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at working with patterns and libraries inside Photoshop. Thank you to the subscriber who asked for this particular video and it's not self-evident how this works. In fact, it's far from that. So it makes a really good topic for a video. One of the benefits of keeping your patterns or storing some patterns in libraries is that they will then be available across multiple computers. So if you have a computer at work and one at home that both use the same login, then you you can get access to the pattern from whichever computer you happen to be working with. Now I've got a document in front of me here right now which is a thousand pixels by a thousand pixels. It's a square document. I have a pattern in my patterns dialog that I want to save into my library. So let's just go and get the new patterns dialog which is in window and then patterns. So these are my own patterns or patterns that I've installed myself. So what I'm looking for is this pattern down here. Now the way that you access this pattern in order to be able to add it to a library is using a fill layer. So you're going to choose layer and then new fill layer and choose pattern. Click OK. You're going to get the first pattern in your patterns dialog. So I'm going to open this up and go and find the pattern that you actually want to be able to save to your library. Now this is at a really big size so I'm going to take it down to 25% so we can see it. So what we have inside the document is just a fill layer that has the pattern on it. In my libraries what I'm going to do is locate the library I want to put it into and the actual group. So I've got a group here called my patterns. You can add more groups by just clicking on here to add a new group. I've just put one for my patterns. So what I'm going to do to get the pattern into the library is just go to the move tool and then click and drag on this pattern and drop it into this group and here it is it's called pattern fill so essentially what's happened which is a little bit strange is that this sort of filled shape has been dropped into here because you can see that the pattern looks exactly the same in this document as it does here in the library and that's going to be a bit of a heads up as to something that's going to cause us a few problems in just a minute but for now the pattern is in the library so what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to delete it from my patterns folder now don't do that. Don't do that unless you really do mean to delete a pattern. I'm just doing that to prove to you that this is going to work in a minute. So let's close everything down. I'm just going to trash this document. I don't need it any longer so I'm just going to click don't save. The pattern is in the library. So now I'm going to create a new document. The last one was a thousand by a thousand. I want to show you the problem. So we're going to create a document that is in different dimensions. This one's much wider than it is tall and it's also taller still than the original one. So just click create. So probably your most natural feeling about this is that you're going to try to drag and drop this pattern into the document. And here's the problem. You can see that it's been created at a thousand by a thousand pixels. This is not a repeating pattern itself. So if we were to put this alongside itself, it's not going to line up perfectly. It's going to line up sort of, but not perfectly. And in many instances, it won't line up at all. So let's just prove to ourselves that this is not a repeating pattern because when I line these up, they're out. Okay, so we do have some significant problems here. Let's just undo this because just dragging things is not the way to do it. If we add the Alt or the Option key, in my case, I'm working on a Mac, so I'm going to hold down the Option key. If you're on a PC, you'll hold down the Alt key. Now, drag that pattern fill into your document. And this time, because it's a pattern fill layer, it's created as a pattern fill layer, it's going to be whatever size the document is. So if the document's 1920 by 1080, that's what your pattern fill is going to be. So that's the way that you get your patterns into your libraries and also how you get them out of the library. But we're only halfway to where we want to be because here is the problem or here is a potential problem. If you want to upload this pattern to a site such as Spoonflower, Spoonflower does not want a document filled with a pattern. What Spoonflower wants is the actual pattern swatch, the square or rectangular swatch that when we line it up in a grid of rows and columns is going to give us a document of as large a piece as we want to fill with our pattern. So we want the actual pattern swatch. Well, here's the issue. We don't have the actual pattern swatch in our patterns dialog. 
because we deleted it. It's in the document here, but it's not in the patterns dialog and it's the wrong size. So we don't actually know how big the pattern is. Well, this is what you're going to do. Right now, before we close all this down, if you have a look over here, we've got the little pattern piece that we're working on. We can prove to that by just clicking on other patterns in the collection here and then go back up here and click on this. And this is our pattern swatch. It's just that it doesn't appear in the document here, but we can read off this little thumbnail here how big the pattern is. So it says donuts 2048 by 2048. And what that's telling us is that the donut pattern is 2048 pixels by 2048 pixels square. So that's information that we need to be able to create a document to go to Spoonflower. That's a key piece of information. I would write that down. Now the other issue is getting this pattern swatch that we've got here into this dialog, into this patterns palette, so we can do something with it. I deleted it earlier, let's put it back in now. And we do that from the layers palette and we're just going to double click here on the thumbnail because that gives us access to this pattern fill where we can size it, we can do whatever we like because the pattern is being stored there. Let's go to the flyout menu and let's go to this flyout menu and we're going to click on new pattern. And what that does is it adds the donuts at the exact right size, 2048 pixels by 2048 pixels. You can see it's going in here at the exact right size and it's going to be a pattern swatch in our patterns palette. It's down here. I can move it up here. Okay, so that's really critical then for sites like Spoonflower because we would need to send this swatch to Spoonflower and if you're unfamiliar with that process what you're going to do is, let me just get out of here for now, is go and create a document the size of your pattern swatch which we just ascertained was 2048 by 2048. So let's just go and get that. Once we've got a document that size, we can fill it with our pattern. Now this time, because we want to swatch for Spoonflower, it doesn't really matter how we fill our document and in actual fact, it would be better to do edit, fill, select pattern as your option, and then go and pick up your pattern and click OK. And what we have here is a seamless repeating pattern swatch. If we were to align this particular document up along here and along top and the sides, then it would be a perfectly seamless repeating pattern because it is the exact right size. So this document could be saved and sent to Spoonflower. So those are sort of some critical issues to be aware is that getting a pattern out of the pattern library is as important a piece of information as getting the pattern into the pattern library. Now there's one other thing of concern that we need to look at before we finish. So what we need to look at next is where are these libraries of patterns actually stored? So I'm going to Creative Cloud. I've already logged into my Creative Cloud account and I'm going over here to Files. And then I'm going to your libraries. And this is the library that I'm working with right now. And it's visible inside my Creative Cloud account because it's stored online. And that's really critical because this is how you're going to get access to it if everything goes wrong and you lose everything because it's still going to potentially be stored here, all things being well. What I'll do is hover over this library, click the three little dots here and choose to export it. So I'm going to click export. Now it's going to be exported as what was called a CC libs file. So just be aware of that because that's what you're going to be looking at. I'm going to select my folder. I'm actually just going to put it in my downloads. I'll click on downloads and click export and then export again click OK. I can close my cloud account. I've now downloaded my CC libs file to my computer so that means that I have access to my library elements from inside Photoshop. Now I can go to my libraries panel here, I can go to the flyout menu and I can import a library. So when I go to import a library, what we're looking for is a CC libs file. Well, we just got one because we just downloaded it. So I'm going to select my library it's going to be here in my downloads. Let's click on the downloads. Let's go to my library, click open, 
and now I can import the contents of my CC Libs folder which came from the cloud onto my computer back into Photoshop. So this is effectively a sort of round tripping exercise. So there's a whole lot more to understand about storing patterns in libraries in Photoshop that is beyond just dragging and dropping them in there. You need to know how to access them once they're there. You need to know how to extract the pattern swatch in case you actually need one. And you should also know where your libraries are stored and how you can get access to them if, for example, they disappear from your computer. Well, now you know how to download them and import them. I'm not going to do that because I've already got it, obviously. Now, before we finish up, I have more Photoshop training at Skillshare.com. When you sign up for Skillshare, you get access to thousands of classes there, including over 250 of mine. In the description below is a Skillshare coupon for you, which is at least as good as the current Skillshare offer, and typically mine will be better. Please feel free to share this coupon with family, friends and co-workers. So thank you to the subscriber who asked for this video. It's a really good question and it obviously turned up a lot more than just simple dragging and dropping. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope you've learned things about Photoshop of which you were previously unaware. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you'll be alerted when new videos are released. Until next time, my name's Helen Bradley. Thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel.